Good morning. How are you? Well, I expect it. Hey, if you're a, a kid out there, how are you doing today? Well, that was lame. Kids, how are you doing today? Awesome. Hey, this morning we embark on a journey over the next several weeks as we celebrate worship God as a church family from 4 to 104, all in the same area. We have kids here. We have grandparents, single parents. We have it all here. And as I said last week, we're going to worship God, and you're going to see Gateway family as God sees Gateway's family every Sunday. We're excited. Our youth back from camp, well, there you go are going to kind of direct us in our worship this morning. I was in first hour. It was totally amazing. You are in store for a great hour of time. So I'm going to have them stand up. Stand up as we begin our worship today as Gateway Family. Gentlemen alike, there's a brand new dance tonight, now get it hype.
Some shake the ground with the sound of revival that heaven rules and fires fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Everybody, the heaven. Great. I want to see more energy and a little crazier, all right? We've got happy day, and let's make it a happy day, guys. Let's go.
It is a happy day. It is a glorious day. And um, we are so excited and grateful that we get to share and worship as a family. You know, yesterday we had a wedding of one of our young people. I remember when she was much younger. And now yesterday we got to watch her walk down the aisle. And that generation is beginning their life together and their family together. And a new family sprouts out of another. And the church family was around today all of us together with our kids and our grandparents and we're all worshiping together as a family this is what the gateway family does and later today we'll have a memorial service for another one of our babies only in his early 30s and we'll say goodbye to a loved one and celebrate his life because this is what the gateway family does we take care of one another we're here with each other we worship together we look to God in every circumstance and we point each other to God and one of our own is hurting again. We got word this morning. A couple of weeks ago, we heard that Margaret Basigua, who is um, our friend in Kenya, who runs the House of Hope for Starfish Kenya, that her father passed away. If you were in the service two weeks ago, you saw a picture of her father. He had just passed that weekend. We got word this morning that her brother is gravely sick. So would you join with me as a church family and lift up our church family in our Southeast campus in Kenya? and pray for the life of Cyrus. It's critical, it could be today. And he needs us praying for him, he needs God's touch. So let's go to God in prayer. Father, we come to you and we worship you because you are the God who saves. You are the God who heals. You are the everlasting God. lift Cyrus up to you right now. We pray that you would touch him and heal him in the name of Jesus. That you would bring comfort and peace to Margaret. That our church in Kenya would sense that their church in the United States is wrapping their arms around them and going before you on their behalf. And that they would be encouraged by that. They would be comforted. And they would feel the love coming right across the ocean and down from the sky that your spirit would flood them. And God, as we worship you, as we lift up our voices and continue to cry out to you, we acknowledge that you are the God who's given us every blessing and you are the God who takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In any circumstance, in any situation, we will praise you. We will trust you for you are good and you love us. As we sing to you, may your spirit pour out on us and consume us, flood us, fill us up, so that everyone, from the youngest to the oldest, would encounter your spirit and your presence in this place. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
at your feet while we lay our desires and our hopes and our needs and we rack up our list to you with our requests. Flood us with the knowledge, the peace that more than any gift you give us, you are our supply. You meet our every need. So this morning we simply ask for more of you, God. Pour out your spirit on each and every one of us this morning as we worship you, as we sit in your presence, as we listen, as we raise our voices and shower the love that you already extravagantly poured out on us back at you. We adore you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Gateway. My name is Brian, and I'm actually here to tell you just a little bit about what Orange is. Strawberry lemonade. Get your fresh squeeze. Cool and refreshing. Strawberry, Strawberry lemonade. lemonade. Um, excuse me. I'm trying to welcome everyone here. What's going on? Strawberry lemonade. Ice cold strawberry lemonade. Twitch, Twitter. What are you guys doing? Hello, everybody. Hello. We're trying to get to Vegas. Yeah, we want to take our show on the road. All right. What show? Our magic show. Well, now's not really a good time. I'm in the middle of welcoming everybody and about to tell them a little bit about Orange. Ooh, we can help. How? With our magic. I don't know. Well, audience, should we let them do a magic trick? Yeah. All right, but make it quick. Okay, good, but we're gonna need your help, Mr. Brian. Sure, what do I need to do? First, take this can and check to make sure it's empty. All right, it's empty. Okay, now, take this red and put it in the can. That's my favorite color. 
Red represents the heart of our family. Now, take this yellow scarf and put it in the can. I love yellow. <laughs> I do too. Yellow represents the heart of the light of our church. Yes. Now, shake it up and say our magic words. Twitch and twitteroo! All right. Everyone on three, say twitch and twitteroo. You ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Twitch, twitch and twitteroo! Now, wait a minute. That wasn't loud enough. Come on, you're a church of what, 500 people? Come on, let's get louder. On three. One, two, three. Twitch, Twitch and twitteroo! There we go. Now, open the can right. and see what's inside. All right, here we go. What? Wow, that's amazing. When you mix yellow and red, you get the power of orange. Welcome to orange, everybody. Welcome to orange! Good morning, Gateway. Oh, they got better. Okay, I'm going to do this again. Good morning, Gateway. How are you guys this morning? I hope it's been a great day. I'd like to invite our ushers to come on down for the morning offering. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please be sure to fill out the Connect card in your bulletin and take it out to the ministry booth in the lobby so we can give you a free gift. We would love to do that. Okay, I have this really cool thing. What do you think about that student-led worship for this morning? Okay, that was really awesome. Of course, for me, it's really fun because... Not only do I get to direct the choir, but I also work in student ministry, and I'm um, a leader over the 10th grade girls, and I love it. So if any of you guys would like to experience what we did, come talk to me. Whether you're an adult or a kid or a teenager, I'd love to have you join choir. Sorry, Betsy, I'm plugging. It's okay. But it was a good experience, right? Yeah. We have something else going on. Um, there's a table out in the lobby. If you guys have families, you have kids, no matter what age they are, little up to teenager, college age, it is always good to serve together, to serve alongside each other, and this really benefits your children. There are several dates and opportunities for you to do this, so be sure and check out the table out in the lobby and sign up for this. It's a really good thing. If there's anything else going on here, check your bulletin. It's the best place to go. You can also go to our website at www-gateway. I'm sorry, www. Dot, get, you would think I would know this, right? www.gateway-community.org. And I want to introduce a really special group. They're going to lead us in one more song. Can I get his crew out here? And while they're coming out, can all the kids come down? Let's, like Summer Kids Club, you guys come down to the front of the stage. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come on, his crew. Let's go. You guys have a great day.
Back in the day when life was easy, all I needed was friends and a TV. I was young and I never worried. A suburb kid in the 1990s, trusted you and always believed. Always knew you'd be right there for me. Just a kid with a little faith, only the thought of you makes me feel this way. You got me smiling like I. Compared to then, this life seems so hard. No need to dress to impress. I was happy back then to look like a mess. And about teenage mutant skateboards, rocking my fanny pack of marbles. Yeah, I know when all the sense will look you in the eyes and be young again. You got me. How about that? That was better. Uh, my name is Mike Lively. I'm the student pastor here at Gateway Community Church. Uh, we are up here. We're going to share just a couple of uh, snippets of what uh, student ministry looks like. Uh, I have Mary Cudworth right here. She's one of our female leaders with our high school girls. And I have Richard Morris right over here. Uh, <laughs> So I'm just going to ask a couple of questions, and uh, I'm going to start with you. Uh, how did you get involved? Why are you here? And all that kind of good stuff. How and why? How about that? Okay. Um, my husband, Spike, has been doing student ministry forever, and my daughter's been in there for several years. She's a senior this year. And now my son is in student ministry, and I was the only one that wasn't a part of student ministry. And um, so I thought, well, I don't really want to be left behind, so I went on a weekend trip with them to Carolina Creek. And I just kind of stayed in the background and took pictures and watched the kids. And it was phenomenal how God moved in the group. Um, it was just so much fun being with the kids, and I just absolutely fell in love with them. And um, I decided that I wanted to take that leap and, and join student ministry, and I am so thankful that I did. Well, we're glad you did also. Richard, what about you? I actually joined, uh, started joining youth ministry in 99 with Abundant Life. You see how powerful your voice is? Yeah, it is. You are, you are unbelievable. I don't even need a mic. <laughs> me have it. Anyway. <laughs> the reason why we got started is because my wife and I, uh, Charlotte, the most beautiful woman in the world, uh, she and I decided that we needed to get involved in church and we wanted the boys involved in a program uh, so that they would grow up pretty much with a Christian background and what have you. And so we finally settled on Abundant. We were blessed to have found Abundant. And I actually started off as the camp nurse. I was going everywhere as the nurse uh, because I didn't want to be directly involved with the boys. I wanted them to have their own little uh, time without dad being right there on them. But then as they've gone on and graduated and moved on, they're 26 and 24 now, so they're not involved at all. But uh, I've gotten to become more involved with the youth. I work with the 11th and 12th graders, actually any high schoolers. I don't have the patience for the middle school. I'm just kidding. Anyway. I, uh, I work mainly with the high school boys because I relate to them very well. I think they relate to me very well. They can come to me and talk to me as a friend. And even though I know that we're, they're all going to be knuckleheads at different times, they're going to make mistakes, uh, as high school, they get into that stage in life where they need to know that instead of mom and dad picking them up by the britches and dusting them off and sending them on their merry little way, they have to make decisions and they'll have to pay the consequences for those decisions. So hopefully I'll be able to make a change or make them think a little bit harder whenever they do make those decisions. 
Thank you. Hey, oh, yeah. He's so good. Uh, just, we've seen pictures of camp. Uh, we saw some moments. What, for a snapshot for you, uh, this last week, Camp Eagle, uh, you got one in your mind. I have two. Okay. I'll let you have two. I actually have a lot. I actually have a lot. But um, I'll share two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to, um, not experience, but um, <laughs> be a part of a uh, group poop experience. <laughs> or, or GP for short. We were sent Why out. Why aren't y'all laughing? That's funny. It's that, really that, funny. <laughs> uh, we were sent out of camp, and we were not allowed to come back. We started at seven ten in the morning. We didn't get back until after ten at night. So you can imagine. But um, they were. It was just a bold statement on their part. <laughs> um, you know, the the spirit moved this week, and um, it moved when we broke up into groups. But I was I was sitting in the the other service, and I thought about something else that came to mind, and uh, God led me to bring this up, is um, the students had a chance to leave their stresses behind. They didn't have Facebook, they didn't have texting, they didn't have phones, they didn't have TV, they didn't have outside sources stealing their joy. They got to play like kids were intended to play, and it was beautiful watching them, and that's such a God thing. You know, God allowed them to be free this week and enjoy themselves and enjoy each other. And um, I know that's huge for them, and it was such a blessing to me to watch them play and be able to play along with them. And um, I love these kids so much, and I just thank you for letting me be a part of it. Richard, you have a, you have a running photography in your head, so just yes. one snapshot here. Actually, camp means a lot to me. I, I really love going to camp, and. Uh, the best time that I usually have is when we break up and the men go one way, the girls go another, and you get to tell your story and really what troubles you, your burdens or whatever, whatever it may be, and you get to talk about that. But this last camp, the one we just got back from Camp Eagle, we had a young fella that was um, new to us. I mean, I just met him before we went on this trip on Sunday, and uh, what was that? Anyway, and. Uh, Though he was kind of new to the group, this group got along very, very well. They communicated very, very well. There was really no arguing at all, believe it or not. When they had tasks to do, they did a very good job. But he actually accepted Christ. And just to know that here's this guy that comes in, he's new, he's asking a lot of the, the right questions when we're having our quiet time together or when we're having our, our experiences together. But he also sit there and he accepted Christ. And that's really what this is all about. That's really what I really get into this about, is to listen to a guy who goes up there and gets to accept Christ. So. Well, thank you all for sharing. I'm glad you all went. Glad you are a part of that. And I can, know I, that can, I share the, can I share this one more oh, time? Oh, your quote. And I'm sorry forgot if you're it, here for your the quote. second time, but it will be good for you. Yes, and, you may and, share. Uh, I'm directing it to the students, but it's really to everyone. Um, I found this last night and it just really spoke to me. It said, sometimes God calms the storm. Sometimes he lets the storm rage and calms his child. And just take that to heart and, and really think about that. And I love you guys so much and thank you so much for being, letting me be a part of your lives this week. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Mary. Well, this is a great day for uh, student ministry. We get to kick off the Orange Initiative. I've got my orange shoes on. Yeah, I know. Stellar. Um, they have black dots. He's got his orange shirt on. Uh, just a little uh, snapshot today. Just I want to share with you a couple things um, of what's going on with our students' lives and uh, where we are. But we got the chance to go to Camp Eagle, which is in Kerrville, uh, uh, probably about five hours away from here. Uh, and today we're just going to lift up student ministry and what uh, these students got a chance to go through. And then I've got a little something I want to share with each one of you uh, that didn't go to camp, but you can take away something today. So I want to kind of share with you a couple things. We, uh, we were asked the question uh, to consider it. That's what we were asked this week at camp, to consider it. Consider what? 
That's the question. And we had five different days that we had a chance to consider something. Our first day was Monday, and we were to consider uh, what we believe. Question to us was, what do you believe? Where are you? What, what, what's driving you to think the way you do? If you're, in a, if you're older than a teenage level, if you're in another generation than these folks, I want you to know something. They are being asked a lot of different things that we were not asked, I was not asked, to consider believing. And this week they were asked, what is it that you believe? So that was the first thing we did. That was Monday. Second day, the second day was Tuesday, and it was to consider adoption. And when I saw this, I thought, adoption, that's just not my thing. Uh, but then it was consider spiritual adoption. What does it mean to be adopted into the family of God? What does that mean to you? What does that look like? And so we considered adoption. Third day, we uh, were asked to consider letting go. Uh, letting go of what? That was the question we all asked when we started that day. And I'm going to touch on this one in a second, and all my funny stories are there, so I'm going to go back to that in a second. But letting go. Consider letting go. Fourth day was consider what matters. We are consumed. We are major consumers in this world. And what are the things in our life that matter most to us? And we had to consider what matters? What matters to us? Fifth day, we were to consider others. And the funny thing about this day was uh, some people kind of were given some tasks to uh, do something nice for somebody else. And so they did things uh, like they went and got, do you, are you thirsty? Can I, get you, can I get you one? Yeah, that'd be great. Hey, um, boy, that rock seems really hard. Uh, can, I, can I let you have my backpack to sit? Sure, that'd be great. And so it was at the end of the day that we kind of, we do these debriefings, and we were debriefing, and we were talking about this very thing. And what turned out was many people didn't know that they were having nice things done for them in the plan. And so we're like, yeah, you did. You gave me water. You are so nice. And so we were asked the question to consider others other than ourselves. Well, there's... There's five of these days. There's one through five, Monday through Friday. But we're not going to do all five. We're only going to do three. Uh, my, uh, my background is uh, out of the Baptist church. <laughs> so I must only give you three points today. Because I can only do three as a Baptist. Was that kind of George Bush? I was close. I'm not sure seem kind of odd. But anyways, um, so I've got three points for you today. We're going to look at three of these a little bit more closely. And the one we're going to start out is, what do you believe? What is it as an individual, what do you believe? Isaiah 53, 5 says this, but he, but he was pierced for our transgressions, our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities, our sins. The punishment that was brought that brought us peace was upon him. And I want you to hear these last words. And by his wounds, we are healed. What do you believe? I watched 80 or so students deal with this question. But Isaiah said it best. We, we, are, we are healed by his wounds. The suffering that he took place for us on the cross, that is what we are healed by. What do you believe? Where are you in your thought process? What is it that drives you to do the things you do? Second thing we considered was letting go. And letting go was kind of a fun day because they all got to their little spots and they had a bag of balloons. Now, Okay, we got some kids in the audience. How many in the audience like balloons? You can go ahead and raise your hand if you like the balloons. See, that's what I'm talking about. We like balloons. We're balloon people. Adults, come on. Come on. Thank you. I know you're a balloon person. So we had a bag of balloons, and we were to blow them up. 
Time off. That was hard for some of the students. I'm not kidding. I'm just, this is really true. And then they were asked to write on their balloons the things that they were wanting to let go. And they wrote these on the balloon. And then they had a rubber band, and they tied the rubber band onto one end of the balloon, and then they put the rubber band on their wrist. And I don't know if you've ever had those balloons that you get to go like this. We saw this a lot that day. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> but wearing the balloon around the wrist was really a burden for some. It's like, nah. and you know, you're like trying to get this thing off, and, but it's there. And they had written on the balloon, what is it that you need to let go of? What is keeping you from believing in Jesus Christ? What are those things? And they wrote them. And at the end of the day, they had to consider this. The thing they had to consider, am I going to let that go? Am I going to let that go or I'm going to continue to let that be around my wrist and bother me? I had a rock, big huge rock, and I came up to the 11th and 12th graders about this big. And I was holding it and I was like, boy, is, does this, this rock seem out of place? Does this seem like a burden to you? And I'm telling you, I had been holding it for about two or three minutes, and it was starting to get pretty heavy. So I'm holding this rock, and I'm going, is this, is this normal? Well, no, it's not normal, I think. Thank you. And so I'm holding the rock, and I'm, and I'm there, and I'm going, what would it look like for me? What would it feel like for me if I took the rock that I've been holding that my body eventually is going to get used to? My muscle structure is going to develop. I'm going to have this rock. I'm going to learn how to deal with it. But what if... What if I took the rock and I did this, I put it aside? How free would my body feel? It would feel very free because it didn't have the burden of this weight. And that is what we asked students to do when letting go. Ephesians 4, and 24 says this, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. When we take the things that we're struggling with and we lay them aside, we're free to seek Him and to know what He truly wants for us, that righteousness and that holiness. Last thing is what matters, what matters most in life. Paul was very clear in Philippians 3, Verses 7 through 9, he says this, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. There is a, there's a way to live life in Christ. We can look at freedom in Christ in a way in which I'm going to show you in a second, or in the ways of the law. You can try and figure out, I'm going to do this, 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 I'm going to just live life, blah, 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 this is great. And you're like, oh, did I do that wrong? Oh. Or, bam, we put the rock away, and we live in freedom. And we live under what Christ has directed us to do. To live in him. Paul says, I want to live in freedom of Christ. Now you're probably sitting there thinking, how does this apply to me? I mean, I didn't go to camp. I'm too old. Well, that's not true. If you said you're too old, you can go. So if you have a desire, let me know. But as adults, what can you receive out of this? These students... These students did what we call a mountaintop experience this week. They went to the mountain. They experienced God for some for the very first time. We had a young man, and I don't know if y'all heard that, but you certainly didn't respond the way I would hope for you to respond. We had a young man accept Christ this week. Amen? Let me tell you. When he began to ask questions, it wasn't like we've seen sometimes before. It's like, you know, trying to understand it. It was passionate. It was in the moment. It was seeing God. It was understanding. Oh, my gosh, he did that for me. It was awesome. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all are awful. I cannot believe y'all just did that. that. That's for later. I'll share that with you later. I was in a moment there. Thank you so much. Good grief. What does it mean to you? How do you clarify? Thank y'all so much. Uh, what's a mountaintop experience? Let me explain. You get away from the normal things. You get clarity. You go to the mountain. You see what God has done for us through the life and death of Jesus Christ. There's a closeness that happens at camp in relationship with God. We don't want to leave it. We don't want to come back to the valley. We want to stay on the mountain. I had a text message that came from a young man last night, and I'm not sharing any names, but the message was this, I'm depressed. I don't want to leave such a good heart, good heartwarming place. That's what camp is. Camp's a great place. It's heartwarming. You're around people that are trying to go the same place you're going. You don't have the same problems that you're dealing with at home. You're feeling a lot of love. You don't want to leave it. Peter, James, and John had a similar experience on Mount Hermon. Uh, it's recounted in uh, Matthew 17, 1 through 6. And it says this, After six days, Jesus took up with them Peter, James, and John. And he led them up to a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground. They were terrified, but Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one with him except Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them. Coming down the mountain. Why did Jesus go to the mountain? Well, we know that Jesus went to the mountain for a lot of different reasons, and one of the reasons he went to the mountains was to pray. He retreated from people. They were surrounding him all the time. There was just stuff swirling him. And the best place for him to go was to find clarity, was to go to the mountains. And that's what he did. He went up to the mountains to pray. And he took three of his closest friends with him. And there was one guy in that group, Peter's his name, and I think Peter is much like us. Peter gets the message wrong a lot of times, what Jesus is trying to do. But he's like us, man. He's asking the questions. He's right there in the moment. And he says to, he says to Jesus, Lord, it's good to be here. Can't we just put up some shelters? Hang here for a while. Live, live with life with you. Peter, you're not getting it. It's not for us to stay on the mountain. It's for us to go back into the valleys. Jesus went for a couple of different reasons. He was at the end of his ministry. He was coming down to the end, and he needed to find solitude from everything that he knew was swirling. He knew that his suffering was coming. He knew that he was going to die on the cross. He needed to go to a mountaintop to be renewed. He needed to go there. And more importantly, he needed to hear his father's voice. Listen to him. I love this guy. I love my son. This is the one in whom I am well pleased. I can't tell you the number of stories that I heard this week, the hearts that just, of children that were, I was breaking for, for their own stories. I can guarantee you there is nothing greater that I want to hear in my life than to hear my father say, I love you. He's right back there. He's wearing a tie. He doesn't belong here. <laughs> That's my mom and dad right back there. He's wearing his tie. But there's nothing greater I want to hear than to hear that man right back there say, I love you, and I'm pleased in you. That's why Jesus needed to go. He needed to hear that voice. He knew what was coming. And he needed to know that it was going to be okay. And the other thing that took place was his face cho changed in a moment. The veil was opened up for just a moment. See, Peter, James, and John had only seen God in his humanity. They had never seen Jesus as God. 
Bam! Face shone like the sun. Changed in a moment. They are going, boys, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Because I'm telling you, if that's who Jesus really is, then I'm wanna, I want to be a part of that. Because that's amazing. And they got to experience his shining glory. Never before, they had only seen him in humanity. They had seen the things he had done, but man, he had, they had never seen him transform like that. And they were blown away. They were terrified. They were scared to death. But he said, don't be afraid. There's two people that are in the, the story, and I've got a couple minutes because I just heard my watch go off, and I'm sorry, but it's raining outside, so you don't have anywhere to go anyways. <laughs> Seriously. Jesus is going to get strength. He needs it. He's coming close to suffering. But there's two people that are there with him. They're Moses and Elijah. And they're two pillars of the Jewish faith. But why them? One, they have experienced the wilderness. Two, they have experienced suffering. And three, they have, re re they have experienced the rejection of the people that they have led. They understand where Jesus is. They've been there and they know where he's going. They've experienced it. Ken Geyer writes... In intense moments with the Savior, he says this, How ironic the three of them standing together. Who is the one? He who is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. That's Jesus. He stands between the greatest lawgiver and the greatest prophet. To be filled by them, encouraged by them, and strengthened by them. Peter does what we do. He just sees the moment. Well, that's cool. You know, just build the shelter. He's like, no, 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 no. You're, you're missing the magnitude of the moment, Peter. You're getting to see Jesus the way he really is. Don't, don't just save it for yourself. You've no, you got to go to the valley. And for you adults, this is where you are. Our students have gone to the valley. They've put the, the, to the mountaintop, and they have put the letting go stuff on their balloons. They've considered that. What do you need to take to the mountaintop to go in retreat with Jesus and say, I need to give you this because if I don't give you this, I can't go back into the valley and live life where I know chaos is coming. See, when you go to the mountains, you have a different view. You get to see things differently. You get to see into the valley. From the valley, you can't see the same things you can from the mountaintop. But Jesus says, he instructs them as he's doing what? As he's coming down the mountain. He doesn't stay there. He knows he's got to go back. Are you willing to take things to the mountaintop with Jesus, to leave that there, to say, I cannot do this, to take your rock and to drop it to the side and say, Jesus, I need for you to go with me back into the valley. We experience the valley every day. Do y'all experience chaos valleys? Come on, seriously, give it up, people. I'm telling you what, life is hard. You want to do life well? then you do it with Jesus. And the only way that you'll do that is by asking him to go with you. You can go to the mountaintop, you can build the shelter, and you can stay. Or you can choose to come back in the valley and have Jesus come with you. That's my hope for these students. That's my hope for you as adults. I want to say one last thing and I'm done. High places of the Rockies, there is no sustainable vegetation. You cannot live up there. Past 12,000 feet, it's not doable. There's nothing to live on up there. Same thing is true for us. The mountaintop is a great place to go. You've got great vistas, you've got great views, but you cannot, we cannot live there. We've got to come back into the valleys where the things are green and things are growing. What are, your, what are you facing today? What are your trials what are your problems? What are the things that hold you back? Quit trying to do life on your own. Know that Jesus has gone there. He knows what you're going through, and he wants to walk it with you. But you've got to allow him to go with you. Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I want you to consider something. 
I want you to consider praying for these students. They need your prayers. Richard calls them knuckleheads. I do too, but I love them. I love my knuckleheads. But they go through a whole lot, and they need your prayers. They need for you to be with them in prayer. Will you do that for them? Will you begin to pray for this student ministry? They need to know that you are on their side. They need to know that you are a part of their lives. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this moment. I thank you for your love for us. I thank you for uh, being able to be here today with my friends. God, you do not call us to go to the mountaintop and stay there. You go, you ask us to go there and get perspective and to come back and live in the valley. God, teach us how to live in the valley well. Teach us how to live it with you. God, I just thank you for your love for us. I thank you for your love for students. I pray for those that, have, that are seeking you, God, that you would fill them up with who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Set